Welcome, Tag. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. A um, very long time. Yeah, I think it's been probably since I've seen you, probably at least about a couple of years. And then since, you know, being in school together, I graduated almost four years ago. And I left in like 2021. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Were you were, were you still there when in 2021? No, I finished. I finished. I graduated at the end of 2019, December 2019. Oh, my God. So right before COVID happened, I graduated. And I was like, I got all these plans. Right. And then, and then know, COVID happened. And then COVID, <laughs> COVID and quarantine. And right. Yeah. Man, oh. how you been? I've been good. I've just been uh, I've just been living here in Provo, in the Provo area. Okay. Um, again, I I work and I work out, and that's all. That's really. I can a, tell you're getting you're getting pretty, beefy. Stop. It's, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good problem it's, now. Right? It's, it, it, I mean, it's a it's it's a pretty basic lifestyle. Whenever people are asking me, like, oh, like, what have you been doing? Like, like, are you doing all these fun, exciting things? And I'm like, I I think it's exciting to go to the gym. You know. But, hey, that, it is fun. I yeah, mean, you know. And so, what are you doing uh, currently for work? Currently for work, I work at a, at a residential treatment center. It's called Telos okay. U. Um, we just work with troubled teens and young adults, um, helping them get back on their feet, get back out into the world. Um, really, really, really nice job. Okay. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. So, so it's fulfilling. Yeah. yeah. So you, you're probably going to be there for a while, I'm, I'm assume, assuming, right? Yeah. So, that, okay. that is the plan. I, I mean, I'm always looking for something bigger and better, but... I, I think I've found a good place to plant my feet for, for a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean, for those that don't know you, it might be good to get into the conversation. What what got you into music mm -hmm. and what eventually led you to want to study music in college specifically? And then okay. I have some other questions about, like, you know, some of the things that you've been doing. Right. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. So, yeah, let's okay. let's start with what kind of got you, what made you know you wanted to do music. Okay. Um, well, I guess I should start with, so my mom, so I'm one of seven okay, and my mom took the time to try and teach each of us piano and voice from when we were like four or five. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only ones that really caught on were my oldest brother and me and then my younger brother kind of, um, but in terms of like wanting to actively seek an education in music, it was just my oldest brother and me. Um, and even, even going into snow college, I actually didn't know if I wanted to fully pursue it. Oh, really? Um, I did not know that. I Well, I, I got back from my mission in 2016, and uh, football was calling my name. And so uh, spring practices were starting up, and we had just gotten a new coach at the beginning of 2017. So I was really excited to, to get football going. Um, but then I auditioned for Madrigals. No, not Madrigals. Cadence. Okay, yeah. Uh, which, I mean, I guess it is a Madrigal choir. Um, I auditioned for Cadence and I got in, but I remember that the, the, the rehearsals were 4.30 to 5.30, and they were like right in the middle of football practice. And wow. so, as, as, as it does, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, 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 I remember telling Dr. Huff, I was like, hey, listen, I, I can't do Cadence. I've got football practice. And he was like, oh, that's totally fine, whatever. Yeah. And so I started doing football practice, and I think that lasted like a month. Maybe, and I remember I was like, no, like I, I can't do football. Like I was I was taking acapella choir and music theory and all these music classes, and I kind of had to make a decision at that point in time of either I do football and I just work on the associates here at Snow, or I fully dedicate my time to the bachelor program. Yeah, and. I remember having a conversation with my football coach, and I was like, "Listen, I, like, I know I'm good at football. I love, I love the team. I love the boys, but like, music is something that's just calling my name." And he was like, "I understand. Totally fine." Oh, that's cool that he was supportive of yeah. that. So, and I and I remember walking into in the middle of a cadence rehearsal. Um, I walked up to Doctor Huff, who was playing the piano, and looking back on it, it was kind of rude. Cause I just kind of like just stopped the whole rehearsal. Yeah. I, I walked right up to him <laughs> mid playing and I was like, Hey, do you guys still have my spot? Like, can I come back <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the, in the school. middle of the rehearsal? <laughs> and Dr. Huff just goes, he's like, take a seat. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. So I got back in 
and then I and then I never looked back after that. Yeah. Um, music has always been a thing in my life. That's whether it's something that I hate at the time or love at the time. Um, I actually hated music up until when I got into high school. Really? Yeah, because my my mom was incredibly strict with okay. our piano lessons. Um, I remember I would fall asleep at the piano because she'd make me stay there for that long. Oh wow! Practicing, you know. That's rough. And yeah, <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> it it was really rough. And um, my the choir teacher at my high school also just so happened to be the choir director in the ward. Okay. Wow. And so I'm like on my last few weeks of eighth grade, and here she is coming into my into the junior high school, and she's finding me in all my classes, and she. She was stalking me, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, she came into my gym class one time, my woodworking class one time, my English class, and all she would say is just, you're, you're, you're trying out for choir, right? And I'm like, absolutely not. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I hate music. Going to every other class, I, that's funny. I, I was like, I, I can't do this. And so the day of audition sh came, and I was like, I know it's audition time, but I want to go home. So I'm walking home, and there's a woman from our ward who's taking her kids to the choir auditions. And she saw me, she flipped the UE so fast. And she was like, get in the van. I was like, why? She's like, you're going to choir uh, auditions. I was like, I don't want to. And then she went, I'll give you this blue lollipop. That's what got And I was you. like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So I got loaded in, I got loaded in with candy. You got loaded, yeah, wow. Um, but that was, that was the turning point. Cause after that, when I started doing choir, um, that's when I was like, Oh, I, I actually really like this. Yeah. And then as time went on, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I love this. I, I love music. And, uh, and it just kind of took off from there. So, Wow, that's, that's actually a really funny story. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you gone back and thanked her yet? I, I, I remember vehemently thanking her over and over again over the course of, of my years in high school. Every time I would go over to Sister Christensen's house, I'd be like, listen, I'm so grateful that you like, stopped me on yeah. the road. That you kind of in a crazy manner flip the UE in the middle of the street that you're not technically supposed to flip the UE on. Yeah. But she was, I mean, everyone in the ward knew that, that I could sing, that I could play the piano. And they knew that sister Esplin had been trying to recruit me for the longest time. And I was like, it, it, it felt cool. It, it, it felt good to be, to be looked out, uh, to, to be looked after like that. Yeah. Um, and so like, it, she obviously saw your potential and was like, you got to harness this, yeah. you know, which I did not want to do. I with great power. With, you know? with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great way to put it. I, I, I'm, I'm not usually one to refuse the call. Um, but for some reason it was just not my, not my time. Um, but again, I'm, I'm grateful that someone was like, you're, you're going to want this later on. Yeah. So, and obviously it paid off. So, I yeah. mean, that, that's really cool. So, after you did that in the high school, how did you know you were wanting to go to college? Like, what, what was the pivot point to be like, yeah, you know, this was good in high school and stuff. Did you just love it so much? or? So I actually was technically supposed to be the next choir teacher at my high school. Oh, really? Um, my senior year, my choir teacher, Sister Esplin, or I guess Mrs. Esplin, her and I had been talking about, like, hey, once you get back from your mission, you go get your teaching degree, you come back and you teach choir here. Because she was like, you're the only one that I trust with, with, with the program. Um, uh, I went to high school, Jewett High School down in Nephi. Okay, yeah. And in the 10 years that we had been competing uh, for choir, we had only taken an excellent once. All the other ratings were superior for nine years. And she took it very seriously. I took it very seriously. Um, quite a lot of the choir members also took it very seriously. And so she was like, you're the only one that I trust to, to come back and, 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 and keep that tradition going. And at the time, I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So when I went on my mission, that was what I was thinking about after I got back. Um, I originally applied for BYU. Okay. I went to school there to get my teaching degree, um, and it, it didn't work out for me. And so I was like, well, Snow College is close to Nephi-ish. It's like a half-hour drive. Yeah, but it's not. It's not too bad. Not too bad. But we both made that drive yeah. many times, so it's, you know we're like two hours. It's not bad, but um, it's 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 close. It's in an area that I'm very familiar with, having driven back and forth between Ethan a bunch of times growing up as a kid. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, I think I'm just going to go to Snow College, and if they have a program for teaching music, I'll just take that. 
And then when I got back, um, that was the plan. Again, the whole time, I was like, I'm going to do this. This is like, like I belong at Duet High School as a choir teacher. Yeah. Um, that is not how it ended up. Um, so what, what happened with that? Uh, it was a... It, it, they, they just get a new teacher or... It, it, various factors, and they were all stemming from me. Okay. Um, the first thing was that staying in Ephraim made me remember and realize that I actually don't want to be in a small town anymore. Um, I mean, growing up in Ephi in a small town, moving to Ephraim for college, which is an even smaller town, Yeah. you know, um, I was like, I actually want to go out and be my own person and do my own thing. Um, and that was probably just the, the biggest factor, truly and honestly, was just I just didn't want to be an Ephi anymore. Um, and the other thing was, at, at, during my time at Snow College, I actually started to love performing more than... The teaching. Than, you know, yeah. Okay. Than, than teaching. Yeah, because um, you were performing all the time. I remember that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I remember uh, during the auditions for the bachelor program... Um, I had a conversation with, I think it was Dr. Dr. Huff. And he was like, are you going to take the performance route or the, the teaching route? And at the time I was like, well, probably the music education because that's where the most, the, the most stable, you know, finances are. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you get a teaching gig, it's... it's You're kind of there until you don't want to be yeah, anymore. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Like, it's its, its own different beast with performing. Um, volatile is probably not the right word, but it, it's, it's very... It's, ebbs and flows. Ebbs a lot. and flows, yeah. comes and goes, you know. And I was like, I, I think I want to do something pretty stable, so I'm going to go for the music education stuff. Um, and again, that is not what happened. A lot of <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's life for yeah. you, right? A, a, a lot of my a lot of my time at Snow was me realizing and saying over and over again, like, ah, that's not. I don't think that's how it's how, how it's going to work for me, you know. Yeah, and everyone's uh, journey is is different. I I honestly had no idea, like. My, my experience is very little. Like mm -hmm. I, I took a couple of guitar classes, but I was a big songwriter. So I knew I wanted to study music because I loved right. it. And I mean, I kind of ended up going more in like the production and live sound side of things. Mm -hmm. But I loved writing music. So I'm honestly kind of surprised I didn't like cling more to the, like, the songwriting side right. of things and composition, which I still love. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there was there was I wanted to learn everything is the problem. There are so many different like I, I, I like teaching live sound but i mean I, the technology side of it was very interesting to me because like a lot of people just don't want anything to do with it it's true i mean yeah you're, you're right <laughs> and, uh, but like they just want to be the performers and the teachers yeah. and, which is all important yeah. but like for me i was like well someone's got to do this yeah and it came out of necessity like early on with the 80s band and everything we had to put on our you know do our own live sound for ourselves right. so it came in necessity and then i just started to really like it for me but that's interesting that you were like, yeah, I want to go education. And then he was like, you know, actually, I really like this performance side of things. Mm -hmm. And you were good. I remember you performing. You're oh, a good performer. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's been a while since I've seen you perform, but mm -hmm. every time I was like, oh, yeah, tag's killing it. Thanks, man. Yeah. I am. Um, it's I the most recent performance thing that I had was doing. Uh, have you ever Savior of the World? I've heard of it. So I did not know that it I didn't even know that it existed until I got a. Um, I, so I have a I have a talent profile with the church. Okay. Um, and so I'll get emails like, "Hey, we're casting for this. Hey, we're you know we're looking for, for for this for this kind of gig." Um, I got an email from the church saying like, "Hey, we're casting for the Savior of the World musical, and uh, these are the dates for the auditions." And this was like in August last year. In twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. And I remember at the time I was like, what "The heck is Savior of the World? What is, what is that?" So you had never heard of it. Never heard of it. Okay. And my original thought was, is that that play that they do in Temple Square? It's like out in between the two visitor centers, and it's just like this little nativity thing. Oh, that's what you thought it yeah, was. Yeah, that, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, it was a musical. That's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they, they probably were some angels, some choir stuff. So that's what I was prepared for. Okay. Yeah. But then when I got there, they were like, hey, here's the whole thing. And I was like, this is not what I used to watch during Temple Square, like taking, you know. From, yeah. like taking the time to check it out it's it's a whole it's a full-blown musical there's two acts each act is like an hour long yeah there are roles and there are lines and i was like 
like, what is, I didn't know the church did musicals like this. Really? Yeah. yeah I had no idea. They put on some big productions. It's kind of crazy. It, it, we were, it, it runs at the same time as, as the Motab's Christmas programs too. Oh, okay. And so yeah. we had a dark week because, um, because Motab was just taking up so much of the building space and, and so many, you know, so many tickets were, were, uh, were going to that. Um, but that was the last thing that I did. Uh, I honestly, if I'm being honest, I actually haven't been doing a lot of performing recently. I just okay. haven't. Yeah. Just other things going on. O- other things going on. Um, a bit of a, of a, of ineptitude in myself to know how to work different things and like how to like network all the things that I would have had classes in had I stayed at snow and had I not bummed around in a lot of these classes. Yeah. Would have solved this problem, but that is not how it turned out. So, <laughs> well, and sometimes that's just how, how it happens. Yeah. But is that something you're kind of wanting to do more of this year and kind of in the upcoming years? Is or is yeah. it? Or you're like, you know, what? I'm okay to do it once a year. Or what, 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 how you are? Where are you with that? I guess. Well, so actually, I work for UVU now as a companist for music theater voice lessons. Oh, okay. Um, Chloe Henry who used to be in the theater program, music theater program down at Snow, transferred to UVU. And for the last couple months, she's sent me, you know, DMs and been like, hey, they're looking for, for, a, for a, a pianist for, for some voice lessons. And it never worked out. Either it was my schedule or they just weren't looking for someone. But then a few weeks ago, they're like, hey, they're asking for you specifically. And I was like, I am in. Heck I'm yeah. so down for that. Oh, you that's know? awesome. And so now um, I sub for voice lessons on Mondays and Tuesdays. However, I talked to um, one of the teachers there. Well, two of the teachers. And I was like, what would it look like for me to just get into the music theater program here? I have credits and I have time spent from Snow College. I'd like to transfer them over. And I'd just like to finish my degree here. Yeah. Um, because for the last three years, as soon as w- when I dropped out of snow, like honestly, bro, I was like, no, we're done. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing school anymore. It's far too strenuous for my mental health. I can never keep myself focused enough to finish the classes. I was like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, and then I've been on this huge spiritual journey for the last year, year and a half. And towards the last, like the last couple months, um, things have been like, you should probably go finish your degree. And I was like, crap. All right. I'm like, fine, I should fine. do it. I should I'll go back it. and, yeah. <laughs> you know, pull um, off the Band-Aid, as they say, right? Eventually. Um, so, anyways, to tie that back into what I'm looking for performance-wise, I think this will be a good segue for me to finish my degree, but also open up opportunities for me to go and audition for different things. Um, again, that networking that we were talking about, just getting my name out there and seeing the people and meeting the people that I need to meet to help me progress. Um, because, I mean, performing is something that I want to do. Yeah. Um, music and acting. Um, I also do want to take some acting classes and get better at that because I want to be in like movies and, 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 and TV That would be pretty stuff. cool to see you in a movie. It would be, <laughs> it'd be pretty. Be like, I, I know him. I know that guy. Man. That that's pretty cool. So yeah. it sounds like you do have some some goals to mm-hmm. get back into it and aspirations for that, which it's awesome. I mean, I, there are a lot of people after they even when they get you know done with their degree and stuff, they kind of just taper off and stuff. Like for me, I haven't been performing as much recently. Like I've been doing more live sound stuff. Right. Um, I was down in Cedar City not that long ago doing this fire festival, which was cool. I was in a, a Park City doing something for Sundance a couple week weekends ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I haven't been like fully immersed in it, right? right? Which right. is kind of what I want to be or yeah. where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I totally relate to that, especially like coming out of COVID and everything with, you know, it was easier for us that we're already kind of doing it yeah. to stay doing, you know, the gigs and everything. And then afterwards, you know, a lot of people had to figure other things out right? as far as like, the, you know, career and making money. Some people just change to doing more like private lessons online, which is great. Um, but then they want to perform, and then things start to open up again. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see what that takes you. Thank in. you. Um, let me know next.
next time you're like doing something at UVU, I mean, I don't live super far away, so yeah. I can, you know, stop by and then, you know, just whether you, you know, playing piano, singing, whatever it is. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I appreciate the support, man, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, the, the other thing that's like really interesting, now that we've, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the COVID era because obviously a bunch of things changed in the country and the world, um, but specifically, in terms of the music industry and honestly just the entertainment industry overall, um, social media is kind of now the only way, not, not the only way, but it's like the true and surefire way of promoting yourself. Yeah. Um, I think of Morgan Ed uh-huh. and, and Kyle and, and the TikTok channels. Yeah. She had, a, she had a video that blew up and now she's taking lessons online. She's, you know... I would assume probably part of the TikTok creative program where you can, you know, make residual income off of that. Yeah. Um, like all these musicians that they release one, one viral video and label companies like, hey, we love to sign you, know, you know, love to sign you. And they're like, I didn't know that the social media thing was going to be such a big, huge indicator of, of how far you're going to go. Yeah. You know? It's like everything now, like, not just as a musician, but, how are you promoting yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, you, like I said, you have one video blow up that can be like be a make it or break it for like a YouTube channel, for instance, yeah. or yeah. a uh, you know a TikTok, or you know you just you only need one viral. Or let's say it's not even a video, but let's say it's a song that people are using their viral videos. Right. Right? That how much money you can make doing that? Yeah. It's like it's crazy. Yeah. Well, and 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 even if you're not, even if you're not a stage performer, like you're not doing all these concerts and stuff, um, the music, the, the music community on TikTok is incredible, because what people will do, and, and, and you've seen the videos where someone will write, like, a melody of something, and then you'll do edit, and people will be playing drums with it, and then other people will be playing, playing bass, and that's, like, a full-time gig for them. Yeah. They don't, I mean, they, they probably have another, another job, but that's their day-to-day. They find people's music stuff on TikTok, they do edit, they add their own little flair, and it gets hundreds of thousands of likes and millions of views, and then they can bank. Yeah. And you're like, dude, you're like, I should have been doing that from day one. Yeah, what the heck, man, man. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't think anyone really anticipated, like, how popular TikTok and, like, YouTube shorts and YouTube and Instagram reels were going to be. Oh, yeah. I think people are like, yeah, it's sh- short form content, but, like, that's all people, that, like, watch and listen now. Mm-hmm. Like, most people, I mean, you're either the type of person that listens to long form content like a podcast or something like mm-hmm. that, or you're just watching the sh- I, I, I've caught myself so many times just swiping through like YouTube shorts, and I'm like, how long have I been here just sitting yeah. and watching this? Yeah. Even though they're super short, you don't really, at times just like, you lose time. It, it, it goes by, and, and that's like, prob- and this is kind of calling out like our short attention span, like this generation, we're just so, we're used to these small tidbits of information because it, it, it hits the dopamine. Okay, we're good. Let me watch another one. You know, get another hit of dopamine. And so, again, I'm not very, I'm not well versed in that area. I love watching it. Yeah. I love my favorite. One of my favorite things to listen to is like there was a um, someone did a she she did an acapella track of Mr. Sandman by the Corvettes, but she did it in kind of like a bossa nova swing. Okay. okay. Someone yeah. added piano and drums to it, and then someone added trumpets to it. And then someone added a bass guitar to it, and I was like, "This is what we should be doing with this. This, yeah. this, you know, inspiring each other and adding on to each other's flavor and, and mixing things up." Um, and so I feel like it's a it's it's a real detriment to you as 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 a musician if you're not taking advantage of this. Oh yeah. It's that being said, that it's still a very difficult thing to to pin down because the algorithm is so it's constantly ever changing. Oh yeah. You could have had that one viral video. And then your next 50, 60 videos are only hitting, like, barely breaking a thousand views. And you're like, what the heck? I thought, you're like, this one had, like, a couple million. What's going on? Million. Yeah. And I got, like, thousands of followers from it. And then on your 63rd video, you hit another viral video. And you're like, it's, 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 it's just weird. Yeah. But, but it works. It does. Yeah. And, and, then, and some of it goes into kind of predicting what will become popular. Mm-hmm. Like, specific topics, for instance, like, uh, there's uh, someone that, uh, that has a channel on YouTube that I was watching talking about, like, what if a civil war breaks out, and how is that going to look like in America, right? And that he, he posted that, like, a year ago or whatever, but, like, nowadays, like, 
to do, even. That's, like, there's a bigger talk with everything going on with Texas versus the federal government right now, right? And so his, his video is going very, very well right now, but that was a year ago, right? So, I mean, I don't know if he would have known, yeah. um, but maybe he did. Maybe he was like, oh. I anticipate things are going to get really hot in the yeah. come up, coming up election. Yeah. But you can do that on a smaller scale, like, if you know an artist is going to come out with, like, a new single or whatever, you can kind of like, oh, I'm going to start releasing songs, covers of this artist or musician right, right. or a movie, right? Like, I've seen people ride that, uh, you know, they start promoting movies, you know, months before it comes out. But then they're like, oh, I'm going to do uh, the theme song to this movie. And then right. you know, they time it well enough. Yeah. So there's a little bit of playing that game, too. Like, mm -hmm. riding the wave is what I call it. Because eventually, you know, the movie's going to be over. And, like, it may, maybe it's one of those that stand the test of time and stays popular. Right. But the odds of that is pretty low. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it's it's crazy. I love it, though. But So you, you do have a TikTok, though, right? I, and, I do. And that you do, like, um, accompaniments and singing. And what, 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 what do you kind of focus on the most right now? So I actually have – and this is actually a great reminder for me to get back into it. So I actually have a couple – TikTok accounts. Okay. And they all focus on different niche items. Okay. Um, the very first one that I ever made was actually a video game account. Oh, um, okay. Because because I also stream on Twitch, and I play um, uh, a video game called Apex Legends. A oh, lot. I like Apex. I love yeah. Apex. I'm not very good at it, yeah. but I like it. <laughs> um, I made a I made a video game account just for that, and then I made a separate account. That's more of like a personal account. So like I do reactions to videos. I post like my gym content on there. And then I do have another music account that I haven't touched in a couple of weeks, which is my bad. Um, It'd be like so, that yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that. Um, but that music account is the account that I want to post reactions to music stuff and or add duets to stuff, um, reacting to different songs, recommending different songs right now. I only have like five videos on there that I made like last year, but they're all okay. just recommendations. Like, yeah. hey, this is a song you should add to your uh, Japanese city pop playlist or your R&B playlist or your your relaxing playlist. Um, but I should definitely get back on that. That is, You should, yeah. I, I, I quite enjoy doing them. Um, my ADHD, you know, doing the hyper-focus thing, hyper-fixating on it, losing the interest, and then I just haven't touched it in a while. Yeah. So that's um, – but I, I definitely should get back on that. You should, and let yeah. me know. I, I, although, if you do reviews, all I ask is actually do a review on it, and not be right. like some of those where you're just your face is down there in the corner, you don't see a word. Oh, and you're have just you pointing seen... up to the yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> How does this guy have like two hundred thousand views yeah. on this? Uh huh. Because, because the people are really there for the the original video. Yep. But they're taking credit for it, you know, trying to get ride that wave. Yep. That's another yeah. way of writing it. Yeah. Um, cause there was once upon a time I posted a video on YouTube. It was a short of Jack Black doing something mm -hmm. and it got so many views, but eventually I ended up taking it down because I was just like, this is not even my, like, you know, yeah. like even though that, cause you can add like words and like edits and stuff. But like, if you, t if you, I don't know, you, I feel like you have to do so much to something to like build it, should be able to take credit for it, right. you know? Right. And that was a good, cause I was testing that example. Cause someone told me like, oh, you could do that and get you know, ton of followers, subscribers, whatever. Yeah. And so I tried it and it did work. And I was like, I don't know how I yeah. feel about this. Right. <laughs> it was just a test of it. Yeah. So I did take it down, but I think at the end when I took it down, I had like 11 million views. Dang. Yeah. And I was Let's like, Oh, I was like, this is crazy. Like if I had, Slay. have I had a count just doing that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could have grown it a lot, but that's yeah. not what I wanted to do, right? Because right. yeah. there's enough people that do that kind of stuff. It's here. it's it's an interesting topic that that you bring up about like where is the credit due? Yeah, you know. Um, I actually recently had a discussion with a friend of mine. Um, he's big into rap, and he's big into hip hop, and we got talking about samples in music mm. and how people use sample switches or they just pull directly from the source and they just place it, and it's like very very obvious what the song used to be yeah um but going back to like there's a guy and then just do wedding stuff and he doesn't say anything he just points um it's it's all in like in like giving credits so like as long as you're tagging the person yeah that you took the video from and giving the credit where it's due kind of like in sampling where it, it's like that thing with ed sheeran 
when he got taken to court for um oh the stairway to heaven uh wait wait what wasn't that that song so it was marvin Gaye's let's get it on oh yes yes. and the chord progression was the same as um i forgot the name of the song was like we found love right where we are yeah, I know what song you're talking yeah, yeah. about. I can't, I can't remember the name the, yeah. for the life of me right now. Of course, um, when we're talking about it. <laughs> but like, he got he 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 got sued. Yeah, I because, remember that. Yeah, and he had a proven court that he's like, listen, it's just the same chord progression. The yeah. baseline just so happens to sound like the baseline from from Marvin Gaye's song. Uh huh. But it's like I promise that I did not. The melody was different though. Yeah, the melody was different. Yeah. The vibe of it was 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 different. Yeah. And so, um. C- kind of like that same thing is like where is the credit due because because us as musicians we want to we want to put something out there but at the same time we're like yeah but 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 i wrote that mm-hmm. you yeah. know like like i'm the one that i like i don't mind you using it but just just let me know yeah you know, you, you, you know. it's copyrighted by you right yeah. and so you sh- someone should talk to you about it or pay a royalty mm-hmm. or pay a copywriting fee right like yeah i mean because i mean anyone can go out and do a cover of post malone song right but they just have to pay the you know licensing fee yeah. for the cover yeah I, I, and honestly i think in distro kit it's only like 12 bucks you could do that oh yeah heck yeah which is crazy yeah. you know like any pretty much any song for you know between 10 and 20 bucks for a licensing fee for a single song at least on that platform right i don't know what right, it is right, on right. other ones but yeah which and it's 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 a little it's a little crazy that it's like actually let me backtrack if you're not familiar with this world, if you're not familiar with, hey, if you want to do a cover, there's kind of a fee, there's kind of a royalty you have to pay, because um, people do YouTube covers all the time. That's it's one of the things that got YouTube to where it's at is people doing famous famous covers of famous songs, and I'm sure not a lot of them knew like, oh, I have to pay, yeah, to sing this song. It's a little weird, but then you get into the industry like, oh no no no, I get it, I get it. Well, yeah. then you want the piece of the pie if it's yeah, your yeah, song, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you understand when it's, you know, your it's your money mm-hmm. instead of someone else's. I think the the good thing that YouTube's really like gotten really strict on is people using other people's songs on videos, mm-hmm. right? For mm-hmm. a long time, people would, like even post like a whole movie or like you know just a whole album on on YouTube, and then people would have a channel that got popular and got lots of followers and views and watch time yeah. because they're just listening to their favorite artists like album like mm-hmm. i mean i'll admit when i was younger if i saw if there was a an, a cd i didn't have i would go to youtube and try to find it and then yeah, if it too. was i would listen to it you know yeah me too and n- now you can't get away with that anymore because nope. i mean if you basically what from what my understanding is you, they'll get whatever you, money you make from youtube or whatever a portion of it will go to the artist or you won't make any money off of it and all that goes to the artist yeah. and you get flagged right which honestly is how it should have been from the get-go yeah but it's just cool that that now is reality and people are taking it a little bit more seriously yeah but also streaming's kind of done it's it's been a pro and a con mm-hmm. for the music industry because people used to pay oh i'll pay 12 bucks for an album 20 bucks for an album right and it has you know 10 to 12 songs and now everyone can stream as much music as they want, and they're paying less or about maybe what you'd pay for one album every yeah. month. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends who you ask. It's just different. Yeah. You know. I know that, well, like Cardinal Bloom, so like Joey, Joey, and all them, um, ha- having seen firsthand, like, hey, we appreciate the love that you guys show us streaming our music, but the best way you guys can support us is buying our physical merch, buying our CDs, buying our shirts. Oh yeah, and I'm like, dude, I'm totally there for that. Yeah, I'm so down to help, you know. Um, and so I, I, I guess part of it is just depending on who you're asking. It's like the the pros is like, hey, like I can't always be around a place where I can buy your merch. You know, I can't always yeah. be available the way I would love to support you. But Spotify is always on my phone. It's true. Apple yeah. Music is always on my phone. So if I want to stream your stuff, like I can be right there. Yeah, and then of, of course the con is it's like half a cent. Yeah, it's a quarter so, of a cent, it's, you know? it's so little money. <laughs> but the nice thing is you can support people that way, and it's right. free, or pretty or yeah. free, relatively. I mean, you're playing for the platform or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no, totally to your point. Yeah, you can support artists way more just buying their merch, and you know, 
I have like a kind of a rule that if I go to a live show, I try to buy merch for at least one of the artists there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I end up buying things that I'll probably never wear. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of cool. Then I have like all these t-shirts. I have yeah. different hats and some of them I really do like, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, but that's just a rule I made for myself. Like there was some other vendor there that was like a musician as well. I can't remember. I bought some like sweater from him or something, but I didn't even, I didn't even really like it. Yeah. <laughs> But it was like his first time like selling it too. And he yeah. like told me his story and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I was like, okay, I'll it. support. And then it was probably more expensive than it should have been as well. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. And There's... he was all excited because I think I was like one of his first people to buy his merch and stuff. So he like took a picture with me and everything. Mm. So I made his day. See, yeah. So... But, but like, but like, that's what it's about. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, hey man, like I, I enjoy your stuff. Like, oh man, I'm kind of not in a place to, oh, but you know what? Like, I'm going to support you. Yeah, and, it's just you, know. uh, you have to, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Life's too short, and then you know you got to support artists. Yeah. Like they put their heart and soul into it, as we know at the musicians with mm -hmm. our own music and performing. That it's just it's, when someone does that to you, it's just like oh, it just means so much, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a role that I have for myself that you know I try to just always buy something or sometimes a few things. Yeah. I mean, depending on how I'm feeling with my bank right, account yeah. at that day, but <laughs> you know, it's like I promise I'll come back. I yeah. can't today, but, but, but I'll be back. There's you definitely know? times I've like, I like t-shirts and like hats from artists. And then I'm like, okay, next time, right? next time. But I always usually get something. Right. Right. Yeah. So. so try to be thankful. Exa exactly. Cool. Exactly. So do you have, what's your, um, what's your handle for TikTok so we can keep you accountable for oh, all of us yeah. watching? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just. So I decided that because I have so many accounts, uh -huh. um, what it is, it's just blank with tag. Okay. And so my main one is just chilling period with period tag. Okay. So the music one is music period with period tag. It, it's, it's a, it, it helps keep me, it helps keep me like, like organized. So I know yeah. which one I'm going to, um, I should, I'm gonna do one on Friday. I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna start making some more music TikToks on Friday. Okay. So by the time this one's released, he should have another one out. Hopefully. If not no, a few. I, I will. I will. Okay, he will. I, I, I have to this ADH thing. Make this, a goal. This, he's gotta make the goal and he's and he's gotta to stick to it. So it's true. So I can Okay, I'll you. be watching for I got it. You. Yeah. I got you. I'll be watching for there it. There we go. Yeah. And then I'll tag you in the YouTube short that I'm gonna make for this. And <laughs> be like <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey guys. We did it. We did it. Here it is. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. No. Okay. So you're going to be coming out with that. Um, I guess another question I wanted to ask was how does music affect you in your day-to-day -day life now? Mm. Um, I cannot go a day without listening to music. It eats at me if I, you'll know if I'm in a bad like bad headspace if I'd rather do things in silence, you know, that's fair. And, yeah. and well, like, you know, growing up how, how my brain's been conditioned is now like I enjoy some sort of white noise going on in the back, whether it's like my fan while I'm going to sleep or like just having the TV on while I do dishes. I'm the same you know? way. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's calming. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so relaxing. Um, but specifically with music, um, I, I've been, I've been, I, I write stories now based on the music that I'm listening to. Um, like short stories is, or, uh... so they start out as short stories. Okay. But currently there is a story that I've been working on since like 2021 that has been a string of, cause usually what happens is I'll listen to a song and I envision a scene in my head Yeah. that I'm like, this would go great with this kind of scene. I was listening to, it was back when I used to work for Vivint. Um, I like to listen to a lot of metal and rock during that period of time. Yeah. Probably because I was feeling a lot of frustration and, and stress. Yeah. You no, know, I get it. We all go, <laughs> we all go through that. We all have our sales bro phase, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, there were a bunch of songs that I was like, Oh, this thing would go great with this. thing would go great with this. And then I think I hit a point where I was like, I think this is, this could all just be the same story. Hmm. And so I linked them all together and I was like, I just wrote a freaking story. And so that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
And so now I, like, I, I write stories based on songs that I'm listening to. And if there's a connection that I can draw with another song that has a different scene, I'd be like, oh, sweet. I can, I can make that into a thing. So now I have, now I'm like actively writing as well. I never used to write. I never used to consider myself like a writer yeah. of, of tales, of fantasies. But like, that's probably the biggest thing for me in the last couple of years is music has gotten me into writing which I, wow they don't teach you that in freaking college you know no they don't <laughs> that's 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 very interesting yeah. that perspective yeah huh and so like if i'm not that being said though if, if i'm not actively writing a story i'm just i'm just jamming out or i'm at the byu music building in one of their 60 plus practice rooms yeah they have a lot which is insane yeah i was like where was this in snow bro they don't mess around. <laughs> well, they also got a bigger budget. They, a they lot more students. A lot more students. Yeah. A lot more money, you know. But, yeah, that's – man. Yeah, they have a lot. They do. And they have a couple um, – they have a couple grands that they have uh, up on the fourth floor. Oh, yeah. um, but sometimes I'll just go and, and I'll, like, have my, my headphones in with me and I'll just play along or sing along while I'm listening to music. Um, music, in terms of day-to-day, has affected me – in like ways that I had not ever even imagined. Um, like I just mentioned, it, it expanded my, my artistic view of the world. I now write, I never considered myself a writer. Um, music just, it just kind of keeps me going throughout the day. I start my, my days, the last couple of weeks have been, I started with a walk and I end my day with a walk and I have to be listening to something. What's the, uh, what's the, uh the genre of choice right now currently um i'm actually listening to a lot of edm and dubstep. really lots interesting. of interesting huh. i have i mean if you go through my spotify i have playlists for virtually any genre um but my biggest playlists are my classic rock one because of snow college yeah naturally <laughs> right yeah, naturally. <laughs> um my classic rock one um my 70s and 80s playlist also because of snow college um, my electro and EDM dubstep playlist, um, my soul funk and R and B playlist, and as well as my um, my my Disney playlist. But like Disney's Disney, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Everyone has a Disney playlist, you know. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially if you grew up with it, and you know, it's just, oh yeah, there's there's some bangers. There there are some there are some certified bangers for sure. Yeah. Um, but currently, yeah, it's 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 a lot of EDM and dubstep um, music that I back at college would have scoffed at because like this isn't real music it's not even words <laughs> it's not even like like is this um i remember taking dr smith's uh, mu- uh history class music history class yeah and getting to the end of it and he's like this is what music is now it's like electroacoustic music and i remember sitting in class like this is terrible it's just a bunch of bleeps and blurps and like i understand random sound effects. random sound yeah. effects that have no there's no plot there's no where's the lyrics where, where's the lyrics you yeah. know um but 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 now i get it yeah. you know like understanding that music is very relative person to person i no longer feel the need to like knock someone for what they listen to because it's their life they're they're listening to what they want to listen to if it gets them through the day hey man let's go good for you you yeah. know i want to listen to what i want to listen to um and right now what i'm listening to is dubstep so that's lots. that's interesting. Yeah. I, that's not what I would be walking to yeah. personally. <laughs> I just get I'd get too into it. Yeah. I wouldn't be walking. I'd be like running around like someone on meth or something. Yeah, no, yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it would look like to an outside yeah. viewer. Yeah, that's cool though. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I definitely go through phases. Yeah, where I'll listen to a playlist for like a month or two straight, and then it gets ditched. You're like, okay, I need I need to listen to yeah. something else. Yeah, and you latch on. You're like, oh, I actually want to listen to this a lot. Okay, it, it's like um. There's a band that I discovered last year called Baby Metal. Baby Metal. Baby Metal, dude. Is it metal? So it's metal. <laughs> I would hope so. If it's called Baby Metal. <laughs> it's a. It's it, they are a Japanese rock band, and the three singers are 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 these girls, and they have a very like when you when when you look at them you're expecting like the J-pop very kawaii voice like like very high very nasally yeah and that's kind of what they do. But the background is rock music, very intense, heavy metal. And I discovered them. I was like, what? 
is this? And it hit all of my little ADHD boxes correctly. <laughs> and I went on a binge. I was like, this stuff is amazing. I'm like headbanging, but also like they have like re- these really cute voices. Huh. Um, you'd be saying you'd be surprised what kind of music is out there internationally. It oh, is, I'm sure. Yeah, it is insane. I, I every day I feel like I like hear about like a new type of music or just like, like a take on music that I, I haven't been exposed to before. And I'm just like, man, just when you think they've tried it all, there's something new that tells you, you, you know, they're, they're trying yep. something even different now, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. it's crazy. That's it, I'll have to listen to baby. What baby met baby metal, baby metal, baby okay. metal. I'll It'll, have to look them up and yeah, listen and, to them. And, and, and again, like understanding that like, it's not going to be for everyone. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure. like, that's okay if it's not for you. Cause it's for me. And I freaking love it. Yeah. You know? So no, I, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I go on binges where, I mean, and people know me very well. Well, I'll go on these binges. I mean, I love John Mayer. Who doesn't love John Mayer? Mm, right. 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 But like right. that, he's like my, like, I'm just driving around, you know, feel good kind of music, kind of think about life, you know, type of, type of music. Have you heard his track with Jacob Collier? Uh, what is it titled? It's called Never Gonna Be Alone. It's got him, Jacob Collier, and Lizzie McAlpine. Um, when, when did it come out? It came out last year. Last year, I think. Really? I'm not sure if I have then. Last year or two. Because I, I go to, you know, the bangers I've listened to forever. Yeah. It, it's, what is it called again? It's called Never Gonna Be Alone. Never Gonna Be I'm gonna have to look, pull it up and see if I have heard it. Yeah, it's, it's a so. good one. Um. Do you listen to a lot of Jacob Collier? Um, I wouldn't say a lot. No, he's but. coming out. His, his new album comes out on Leap Day next month, um, and I'm so freaking excited. He's, oh yeah, he's, that's come Leap Leap Days yeah. thing. I forget that it is. I, yeah, I, it just pops up on it. A just, it just happens. Yeah. Um, but he's doing collab songs with uh, Kirk Franklin, Lawrence, Shawn Mendes, okay, yeah. um, Michael McDonald. Um, it's, it's, it's some really good stuff. Yeah. He, Jacob is like kind of what you aspire to in terms of like your knowledge of music theory. Cause if there's two things that I feel like are holding me back from like really going forward in performance, it's my knowledge of music theory and my knowledge of live sound. So whenever people talk about live sound, I'm like, I'm so jealous because I'm like, I want to learn how to do it, but there's a lot of bleeps and bloops that I just, I like, I look at that. I'm like, what? is going on on that soundboard i have no idea yeah you know and that's why i mean when i first started that was the same i was going through my mind too but i'm like i have to know yeah you know mm. I, I want to know i have to know you know yeah because like once you un- you do you don't work with enough soundboard stuff they all start to make sense i mean did you ever um be on tech crew at all um i don't think i ever did that was a good opportunity in in, in the school to just work with the bands and stuff to right like learn from your own errors right because a lot of students didn't know what they were doing but they wanted to learn so and they weren't really performers so it's like okay well let's give them they can be in the ensemble but they're doing tech right right and i don't know i think that's super cool because some people are like the way they looked at those students were like oh yeah they weren't performers they weren't the stars it's like yeah but they they're gonna help you guys look good you know once they get everything they're gonna help you sound good you know and set up your monitors the way you like it and but yeah, for me, my mind, I'm very, I like technology mm-hmm. to, you know, I feel like most of us like technology, but some of right. us like it to a different level. Yeah. And for me with audio, I'm always like, I have, to, what is that? Like if I see like a new board I've never seen or like a new microphone, I'm like, okay, well, how do they have this hooked up? Okay. Mm-hmm. And how they have it routed. Yeah. And there's always more to learn. So for me, it's like, I don't know. I, I wish I would have like known I was that excited about it. Like when I first started. Like my mm-hmm. freshman year, right? Because I got more into like the end of my junior year, so I had about you know a year and a half or something into it. But you know, even after graduating, I still love dealing with it. Still love doing it. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's crazy. I I applaud you, and I applaud anyone that that handles. T- like I remember, I took uh, I took my first live sound class in in the in, in the piano lab. I lasted like a week. Oh, really? And I was like, no. I, no, thank you. I, no, thank you. Cause like it, and, and I guess I just, I, I just didn't have the patience for it. And like, I regret it now, you know, cause I'm like, I like, this is something that I have to, 
like like you just said, it was like I have to know. Yeah. Um, for me, I just haven't had the opportunity to really sit down and iron all of it out. Um, but it is definitely like something in the future that I'm like I have to know how to do this. You know. Well, next time you're, you know, in a place where there's a board or you know there's some kind of performance going on, like if you can get there early, like let's say you're performing or accompanying someone, mm-hmm. just like hang out with the tech guys. Be like, you were like, hey, like. You know, I'm, I'm performing later, but I, I want to help out. Like, I want to learn how to do some of this stuff. If you guys don't mind me just kind of shadowing you or following yeah. you around. Honestly, that's what I did to begin with because I was like, just like in any opportunity I had, right. you know. And most most guys were like, yeah, that's that's cool. You know, some guys are like, if it's a really like stressful situation, they might not be so cool with that, right, you know. Right. But if it's like more low key and they have plenty of time, mm-hmm. they'll be like, yeah, sure. So yeah, they'll talk about you know XLRs. I mean, stuff that you some things that you know, but then yeah. some things you won't know, right? And like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I'm so surprised how many musicians actually don't know like what the purpose of a DI box is, or what a DI box is. Right. Like, I I had a musician once told me ask me for a like a stage box, but they were wanting a DI box. And a stage box sometimes is used for like a snake, mm-hmm. a, a, another name for a snake on the stage, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, the digital snake's right over here. Is that what you mean? He's like, no, 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 no. I want a stage box. And he didn't know what he didn't know what a DI box was. And I was like, okay, well, what do you want it for? And he's like, well, to plug in my guitar or piano. I was like, okay, so you want a DI box? They're like, what's that? You know? <laughs> I, I mean, most people actually uh, don't even know what DI stands for. Do you, by chance? No, I it's, it's, it's no a, idea. So most people think it's like direct input, mm-hmm. but it's direct injection. Oh, oh, kind of interesting, huh? Weird. Yeah, because you most people think direct input makes sense. Yeah, direct injection. So, and you know what it does is it converts an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. That's okay. the whole purpose of a DI box. But I mean, there's other things you can use it for. Like, for instance, if you have like an instrument cable, you and it's super long, or you would you'd have to have a super long one to go to the snake sometimes. Right. But if you have a DI box that's you know, plugged in an XLR is plugged into it. You can just bring it to right where the guitarist is going to stand. Then he can plug his instrument cable into there. Cause most guitarists are going to probably only have an instrument cable. That's probably like 15 feet. Mm. You know, right. they're not going to have a 25 to 50 footer probably, you know, I mean, cause that's just too long. And uh, yeah, they'll probably just get a wireless rig at that point. Yeah. But I was going to say some of the, some, some of the boys that we've played with are the ones running around, you know, yeah. Jumping up and down. You're like, I thought you were on this side of the stage and now you're over here. Yeah. What do you get back here? Anyway. Most, most of the time yeah. those guys are wireless. <laughs> and, and honestly, coming from a guitarist standpoint, when you first get a wireless rig, the freedom is so nice. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Because you're just like usually stuck there. I mean, if you have a pedal, you still have to come back to it. Mm-hmm. But like being able to like get off stage and be like in the front of house and hearing yourself and being in with the crowd, things like that are so fun. Like mm. obviously you want to feel comfortable enough to be able to do that. Yeah but it be able to, to like walk around and sometimes people depending on the venue and the type of performance that might be weird if you do that yeah but be able to go over to the other side of the stage and be like okay now i'm going back to back with the bassist and we're, we're gonna rock out to this riff right yeah or you know even like go down on your back and like roll around you know right more kind of like performance type of stuff yeah. but well it, it's funny that it's funny that you're mentioning like freedom with like the guitar because i'm kind of the opposite when i'm singing I actually kind of like to just plant and stay in the same. Like, obviously, if I'm feeling the groove, I'm dancing around, I'm doing my thing, but I rarely ever leave like your like, box, like like yeah. like like a four or five foot box. Yeah. And and I don't like people like um like like some of the some of the people that we've performed with back at Snow. They take control of the whole stage. They're going back and forth. They're interacting with the crowd, and I'm like I. I like that, but for me, I'm like I kind of just like to and just remain. make your presence and that portion of the yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. Like, like make my presence known, and but also like convey to the audience, like, hey guys, like I'm here to perform for you. I I think what it is subconsciously, it's like I'm I'm here to perform for you, and I love performing, but selfishly, I'm here for me to listen to the music and to be part of the music being part of the the collection of the sound is more important to me than than making sure that i'm the spotlight like like yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's an interesting perspective um i've never thought of it that way 
so for me like running around it's never that i want to be the spotlight and right, also right, right, my right. my experience is like coming from like a very performance type of band like mm-hmm. you know, like 80s cover band where you're going crazy with 80s rock and roll right, right. so like everyone was kind of that way in the band like that's what we promoted like and which was fun to watch by the way it's it, it, it was fun to quite do. enjoyed it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, you know sometimes i'm like man we gotta play again yeah. I, I've, I've told a couple people in the band that so we'll see what happens yeah maybe something maybe we'll just be like old men playing again one day have a reunion but for me yeah it's like okay i want to share this experience with people band members i don't get to like really interact with because i was so limited yeah you know to be like okay i gotta be on this side of the stage and i feel like it also depends on the type of performance that it is like how much you should be that way right Mm -hmm. for a party uh 80s band yeah you probably want to be rowdy on stage right but if you're not it's like you're singing some kind of pop or soul or you know r&b yeah you know maybe it's like you have energy but like you're in a smaller space because it's not warranted to like be as rowdy on stage. Right. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so there there's a very i can't remember this dude's name but there was a a, a world-renowned jazz player who was having he was holding a, some sort of conference seminar um stadium full of people and they were it was it was a q a session and someone came up and and they asked him like hey when it comes to performing music is it always better to perform for the listener or is it better to just perform for you as the player? And this musician was like, the music is always for the listener, but the first listener is the player. Yeah. And I remember listening to that and I was like, checks out because if I, if, if I'm not feeling the music and if I don't feel like I'm connecting with it, I doubt anyone else in the room is either. Yeah. No. You know? you, and audience members can feel that. Yeah. Like if you're kind of, playing like maybe maybe the music means a lot to them but when they're performing that day they just aren't in it right yeah. like their soul isn't in it and it's hard to connect with an audience like and if you know since you know yourself you're like yeah i'm not the guy to run around stage trying to get claps from everyone and yeah. you know, clap their hand or whatever um get everyone going like this you mm-hmm. know type of deal but you can connect with them in more of like an intimate way mm-hmm. right yeah and you know that's the type of music it seems like you like to perform more which oh, yeah you know, not everyone can do that either. Like they right. can, maybe they can sing the song, but right. they can't connect with their audience without having to go out of their way. And then maybe it doesn't really fit the mood. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, even though, e- even though I consider myself like decently educated in different genres of music, I listen to hundreds of thousands of songs a year. The, I always gravitate back to soul, funk, r and music. That is that is exactly like the kind of stuff that I want to be doing. That's right up my alley. I I love soul so much. I love funk. It's so good. I I have a good buddy. I don't. You may or may not know him since you're at UV doing some things at UVU. Do you know um, Alec Tambo? I do not. But he has I've a heard, funk band. I've heard his name. Yeah. So he has a funk band okay. called Vibe. Oh. So if you like funk, and this is a little shout out to him as well, you know, he uh, he's been on 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 the podcast before. And oh hell yeah. Yeah, he's a. Uh, he has a pretty cool funk band. Oh, so. dude. I'm so down to check out. So I'll have to out. let you know next yeah. time he has a show, we can go. Dude, I'm down. So, yeah. And they're, they're good. They're good. It's, Bro, they, sign me up. It's interesting. A lot of the different members all write music. So it's not like one person's the, the songwriter. Right. So you get a lot of different tastes of different type of funk, which to me is interesting because, like, usually in a funk band, you kind of know what to expect. Right. But they'll, they'll pull things out. That I'm like, oh, you would well, not I get did. this from a normal funk band yeah. because they just have so many different types of influences and you know different personalities and different voices and they'll take you know if one person s- sings on this song this verse and then on the second verse someone else sings or yeah. they write it for this person to sing you right. know but they all take turns singing as well which yeah and you know doing solos well and, and that's so good to hear that there is a funk band in the area because i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest part of the reason another reason why i don't like to get out and, and perform that much is because it kind of it, it feels it, it this area is very rock and indie rock based yeah the, at the velour at all these different gigs at all these different bars and these nightclubs and i'm like I, I, there's not a lot of soul music out there here I, I, again at least here in the area yeah you move further up north and you go to like lake effect and it's there but i'm like i don't have a lot of to, i don't don't have a lot of money to travel very often and i want to try and find the soul R&B scene here and it's what it's very difficult to find 
and so I'm, I'm so glad to hear that that that, that there's a band that, doing that, that it there's yeah. a band doing it yeah yeah that's it, great it is cool i mean they were in the battle of bands at um i'm blinking on the name the boardwalk oh okay yeah so they oh, they, yeah. they they tied for first place right um when i went to the um and i think that was in november i think it was in november time okay. but yeah they, they killed it and they did a really good job um there's some technical issues with their sound guys, which I, you know, me being me, I, mean, I try yeah. not to like do anything, <laughs> but I, like I notice it. And so it's, sometimes it's just hard for me to like, just focus on the artist sometimes. Cause I'm like, I'll, you know, once I start hearing those issues, I'm like, okay, guys, turn up the microphone, mm -hmm. you know? So I start talking to myself that way, which I try not to be like, it's not, not my venue. I'm not the sound guy that night. Right. Mm -hmm. And it always, it's never fun when you're like trying to run sound or it's really annoying when you're running sound and someone else is like, you need to do this. You need to do this. It's like, okay, just let me do it. Right. Yeah. Like, cause, and a lot of times you'll get people that have no idea mm -hmm. like how anything works with the soundboard, like a parent or a family member or something. They'll, they'll come and talk to the sound guy and be like, Hey, um, so this, this isn't loud enough or, you know, and they could be right. And a lot of times they may be, but you know, sometimes it's like, and, I'm pretty accommodating to those things. Oh, well, thank mm -hmm. you. Let me see what I can do, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes it is annoying when too many people just start thinking, oh, our ears are better than whoever is doing sound. And sometimes they could be, like I said, but that's not what they're hired there right. to do. So yeah. it just kind of depends. I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll take it, things with a grain of salt sometimes, but yeah, it's, it is annoying when you're trying to do your job and figure out like a really stressful thing. Like let's say something's gone wrong, like a, XLR went out or something. Now all of a sudden there's, you can't hear the bassist or something. I don't know, something mm. crazy. And it's not the board. It's like something with the routing or someone on stage kicked it out, which that probably happens a lot. It's happened yeah. a lot. Like I've, <laughs> I've seen XLR cables just get like executed, you yeah, know, like yeah. killed on the spot. Uh -huh. And then like, I had a photographer at one event step on um, a wire for the mains. And so one of the mains went out. It was the right stage. It was uh, uh, stage left. Ooh, went out, and I was, I was like, oh my gosh! Like, it's all <laughs> like the, the 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 artist is performing, and I'm having to like crawl like onto the side of the stage, try not to make myself noticeable, mm -hmm. and like plug it back in. Yeah, yep. And then I went and talked to the photographer, and I was like, hey, so can we just be more careful when we're by the stage? Like, you you just stepped in the right place. Like everything else was taped in, but you stepped in the right place to just pull it right out. And then they're like, Oh yeah, we'll take care of it. And it's uh, sorry about that. I didn't know that. It's, it's okay. It's, you know, trying to be cool about it's it. Like cause hundreds like, of dollars of equipment, but you know, yeah, I just work here. So. I, 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 I just work here. I don't know anything, <laughs> but you know, those are stressful moments yeah. for sure. And you have to be able to like pretend. Sometimes you have to kind of pretend like nothing's going on while you take care of it. Right. Right. Cause then people can pick up on like, the anxiety of like something's going on right yeah and sometimes people like don't even notice it when after you've taken care of it like mm -hmm. like they're focused on the artist and the artist is doing such a good job but you know something like that it was kind of a little more obvious yeah but like sometimes you know there might be like if you have a big piece band you know you someone might be like too quiet or something or their the wireless mic went out right on their instrument mm -hmm. or whatever and you're like okay i'm gonna grab some batteries and then the next this, between next song this. you're just like change yourself you know yeah. like the, the dude those musicians that can that can have technical difficulties on stage and still keep playing and going um i think of like bb king oh yeah and he's doing his thing his string snaps dude still playing calls over for a replacement string strings up his guitar mid playing dude still singing i'm like dude how do you do that yeah that's i could ne i could never do that that's pro that's, that's expert pro yeah, level like yeah I couldn't do that either. Or like something that I know that a lot of the guitar player teachers like were teaching is like, okay, well you need to know the board. So the, the neck of the guitar so well that if you lose a string, you can still play. Yeah. You know, obviously you're going to have to change the things. Right. But like, if you're doing like a yeah. solo, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this a little bit different, um, a dynamic register, you know, but it's the same notes. It's like, you should know the board or the neck. I keep saying board, but right. You know, yeah. the, the neck so well, that you can just okay, I'm, I can play without this, you know, string yeah. mm -hmm. or this, you know, and, and uh, when people can do that live, or like, for instance, they get hurt on stage, like 
I, I don't know if you remember watching Dave Grawl like break his leg. Oh yeah. And then he finished the show. And then Post Malone, like there was one show he got really hurt. He 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 uh, post. I, th- I, think I think he broke his leg too, didn't he? Well, because he fell through the stage. Yeah, yeah. He fell right through the stage, and he like rolled out. And he like he was still singing, like laying down. He's got the microphone laying down, and he sat up and walked around and still finished the set. Yeah. Those people are crazy. Or um, that's legendary, dude. It's for real. Yeah. Um, I remember when we did our classic rock concert in the spring of twenty one. Um, one of our one of our. <laughs> I think it was do you remember do you remember ty carter yeah 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 i love ty we're i think it was during uh it was either during the pink floyd medley or the van halen medley i turned around just at the right moment dude's going off as he does yeah and right as i turn around he snapped one of his drumsticks and it went flying and he like locked eyes with me and then he went like this back and forth while he's reaching down to grab another to, to grab another drumstick, his left hand is just going crazy, and then he went <sighs> right back. He he never lost the pocket. Yeah, he's still just flying. He's like, he was, All right, I'm gonna. He was going in, and I was like, dude, that was uh, after the after the show. I was like, that was freaking incredible, dude. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, I do that sometimes. He's like, yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. I can see Ty say that. <laughs> yeah, Ty, Ty is a, a phenomenal percussionist oh, yeah. and drummer. Like, and that. That's I think drummers kind of more bred for things that bad to go because I mean it's pretty common to break a, a you know a stick yeah and they you just have to go with the you know with the punches on that and be like okay I'm still gonna have to play yeah and you know sometimes they'll omit omit a couple things you mm-hmm. know until they can get their second you know stick back or they'll just keep playing with one hand like you know Ty was doing it. and that's that's awesome but yeah. that's kind of the expectations you have to do that oh for, yeah for if it's yeah. something if you break a string on on stage and you're a guitarist or something like. Some people can do that, but I think most audience members would be like, okay, yeah, yeah get, get another guitar. That's fine. Yeah. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't care, but I feel like percussionists and drummers, there's like this expectation that like, no, you you power through it because yeah. you're the, you're the, the foundation, right? You got to You got to keep going and everyone is relying on you. Right. But yeah. a, a harmonic instrument or, you know, obviously if you have more of a melodic instrument, that's a different yeah. story. Cause it's yeah. like, well, I don't have another string, you know, yeah. type of deal. It's like, well, and, and that's the level of that. That's the level of expertise that is demanded of you. Like if you're going to go out and you're going to promote yourself, like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a, an amazing drummer or I'm an amazing bassist or I'm an amazing vocal singer. Part of that is alluding to like, I can also handle myself if things go wrong. Um, I believe there was a performance that Tina Turner did where she's saying, um, this Christmas, uh, 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 by Donny Hathaway, it's like hanging on the mistletoe. That song she sang it for for some American jamboree. I think it was Tina Turner. Anyway, everything went wrong. She didn't. She couldn't remember the words. Oh no, that's and, the worst. And what what made it even worse was she was she was supposed to have backup singers, that didn't show up. Oh no. And the guy that was holding up the cards for the lyrics, he was getting the lyrics. the The cards were mixed up. So she's on national television, literally followed up by the president of the United States at the time, Bill, Gl- uh, Bill Clinton. Yeah. And she's singing the song. She keeps looking back and she's like, where are my backup singers? Into the microphone. She's like, and I'm supposed to have some backup singers? And she, but totally in the zone. Yeah. She didn't lose her step once. And I was like, that's, that's where you have to be. Yeah. To be on places like national television, you have to be able to roll with the punches. And it sucks. I'm not saying that it's, you know, a walk in the park because when those moments hit, it's terrible. Like I've forgotten lyrics in front of hundreds of people multiple times. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, but, but I, I can't choke. No. Yeah. You know, cause they'll notice and yeah, they'll, they'll notice. And as forgiving as your friends and your family that come to support you want to be. And they're like, Hey, no, it, we didn't even notice. Like, I know you didn't notice, but I noticed and it pulled me out of the music yeah. just long enough that it kind of threw me off. Yeah. You know? So I think the key is being a master improviser when things like that happens, yeah. like being such a, a seasoned musician that you can be like, maybe I did forget um, a couple lyrics, you know, like the beginning of the second verse. It's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Okay. Well, maybe I'll scat it. Like I know the melody I'll mm-hmm. scat it and then go into the verse. That would be cool. Yeah. Like, and it would seem natural. You're like, you know, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, now I, then the audience will be like, Oh, now I recognize this part. Yeah. This did this, this yeah. kind of, rendition of it right mm-hmm. 
And it's like, it wasn't wrong. Definitely wasn't wrong. You know, it's just wink, you just know, <laughs> different. I, I meant to do that. That's the thing. You got to fool yeah. people. And something in guitar is like, the, there's a saying, you're always just half a step away from being in the right note. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. So you're just like, you hit the note, just slide it up and do maybe like a little like, um, passing note to where you're supposed mm -hmm. to be. Right. And mm -hmm. then you're like, Oh, that's kind of tasty. It's like, even oh, though I didn't mean to yeah. do that. <laughs> he's like, wow, he's so creative and, and, and new. It's like, thank you. That's you're like, exactly what I wanted to do. You're like, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So good. Oh yeah. Well, with my last question, we, this has been a great discussion. I'm sure we could talk music all day, Oh yeah, but sure. that's just how it goes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I'm curious, would you ever, just kind of going back a little bit, mm. would you ever just with your stories and everything you were talking about, like direct and write music videos? Cause you're my, to me, I'm like, you were talking about that. I was back in my head. I was just like, tag needs to be like in charge of making these, making music come to life mm -hmm. through video. Cause he has the stories in his mind and he can see it. So he needs to do that. Yeah. I don't know that that's, that's something I was thinking about. So what, is that something you would ever like, consider maybe like trying to get into and dabble in so i've asked myself the same question before um although it's usually the third or fourth question that i ask the first question that i'm always asking is because i want to turn these stories into shows into movies because they play out as movie scenes in my head and so i have roommates that they do film stuff both of them are filmmakers both of them are writers both of them are directors and so having the constant feedback of them and like ironing out the kinks. I'm like, I really want to turn this into something like that. However, if that's not the case, the next, the next question that I ask is, well, maybe, maybe I should be writing some musicals, you know? That would be pretty um, sweet. It, not it, gonna it, lie. I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of working on one right now too. Um, and again, I'm not sure if I'm following any sort of status quo on how to write a musical or what to do. I'm I mean, just, is there a wrong way? There, I mean, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, I don't know what's the, I mean, there probably is, but you yeah, know. it's like, I don't know what's the established way, but I'm doing it my way right now. Yeah. Um, so it's like movies, maybe musicals, maybe. And then music videos. Uh, and I'm like, that is definitely something I also want to attempt. So with, with, with some specific songs, they would, the music videos that I have in mind when I think of music videos, they still kind of play out like movie scenes too anyway. Yeah. Kind of like the old, cause dude, music videos back. I mean the eighties music videos, seventies, whatever, and nineties were great, but there was something about two thousands music videos into the early 2010s that I was like, these are just straight up movies. Yeah. Cin cinematic, you know, very, and... very cinematic, um, to where they have the song playing. There's a break in the song to let the video actually play out. Cause it's a plot point. And then it goes into the next bridge or the next verse of the song. You're like, oh, that's what he's singing about, you know? Um, so to answer your question, like, it is something that's been on my mind. I have not, I just have, again, it's just the resources. I have all these people that I'm like, but I don't even know how to go about asking, like, hey, do you want to come work on a music video with me? I, I don't know well, what the song stop, is, you know? Stop, I mean, if you, if you have an idea, be like, all right, I'm going to do this song. It's like, I want to do this song. I have this idea. You have roommates, you know, and other people in your circle. You could be like, no, I don't know how to do the video, like the, the shots right. and the, the editing, but I know what the story, I, you're like, I know this location would be perfect to, to do it. And then as far as like what shots are, I, I'll, I would need help with that, right? Yeah. Or then I know the second place, you know, the A and the B role or however you, you know, maybe you do an A and a B and a C and then go back to the B, you know, I don't know right. how it would be in your head, right? But oh, yeah. Um, but then you have people that do this for either they're really passionate about it or they do it for a living. Maybe they would want to jump in in a project with that, yeah. you know, with you on that. So I'll tell you honestly and truly like part of the reason why I hardly ever ask is, um, and this is a bit of a personal thing. It's, it's, I have, it doesn't help that I'm, I'm a musician with this. I have a very strong sense of perfectionism. Yeah. It is incredibly intense. Part of it is just because of how I was raised. And the other part is just, unfortunately, you know, in my time down at Snow College, as amazing as the music program was, um, there were also definitely some some voices that were in, intensely more critical than I would have liked. And it kind of ruined, like, how I viewed myself as a musician. And I'm like, oh, man, like, mm -hmm. if I can't have it 
be lined up exactly how it is, then it's then then it's gonna fail, you know. And so, I kind of got into the habit of just never asking for help, because I was like, I think I'll just do it myself, because I don't want anyone else to mess it up. When in reality, it's just like I don't trust anyone else to do it because I'm so, you know. And, but it's definitely something that I'm working through. Yeah. You know, and I've gotten a lot better at it since leaving Snow College. That's part of why I didn't want to go back because I was like, I don't want to fall back into this old trap of, of being so stuck inside my head. Yeah. You know? And it's easy to do as a musician. Like, oh, yeah. we're our worst critics, right? Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's it's a blessing and a curse to be, like, a perfectionist because the blessing is that you can, if you hunker down and really work at it and don't talk yourself out of doing something. Yeah which is the hard part, right? Not right, talking yourself right. out of it. Then you can make some really cool things and you kind of a, get an obsession over it a little bit. But then the the con is you talk yourself out of it and it, yep. because you're like, well, I'm never going to, it's never going to be perfect because nothing's perfect. Right. Right. And then, so there's, there's pros and cons. I've seen some people yeah. that have those tendencies that do really well because they just like, I can't see myself not doing this. Right. And then they will live a little poor for a while until they get to the point where they're being successful. Now they're making money doing it and they're, they're happy, you know? And then some people there is like, well, I'd rather do something I know I can do really good at for sure. Yeah. Instead of fail doing something, yeah. you know, but I, my personal, I, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist at times too. Um, but the way I look at it is, is do you really, are you truly learning if you don't fail at something at least once? Or right. Twice, yeah. Right. Cause I mean, some people are just talented naturally. Yeah. They have that born talent. But if sometimes you got to learn and kind of crash and burn a little bit, and then you're like, well, I know not to do that anymore. Yeah. Or, you know, that's kind of part of life, you know, with anything. But yeah. it's funny because I was actually watching uh, some clips from Alex Friedman cat podcast earlier today. And he was talking about like, hey, someone, uh, one of his viewers asked, he's like, should I focus more on building my strengths? or addressing my weaknesses and what he said he was like do both but have a bias towards strengthening yourself and so having this conversation with you and, and thinking about it i definitely have weaknesses of i don't know next to nothing about live sound i don't know next to nothing about um like 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 film stuff and how to work a camera and what what the heck grading means and like like color gradients and all that stuff. But I do know that I'm good at music. I do know that I'm I'm good at performing. I know that I want to be an actor. And I know that I'm that I'm getting good at writing. And so part of that perfectionism that we were talking about is just letting go of the things that you know that you're not good at. And if someone else is like, hey, I do live sound. This is literally a strength of mine is swallowing your 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 pride enough to go okay then 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 I'll let you do it yeah which 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 is hard it's 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 incredibly hard cuz then you have people like oh I don't I don't think you know the knob on the gain is is supposed to be like this and you're like but this is my job this yeah. is what I this is what I this is my craft you know um and it 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 can be infuriating at times but it's it's definitely something that I that I have to work on that I'm constantly working on so I'm definitely going to start uh, you know, asking for more help for, for stuff like that. And that's you know? awesome. I mean, I, I, I'm in the same boat. Sometimes it's, it's, you don't want to have to ask for something cause you're like, well, I'll figure it out, yeah. you know? But then it's like, well, maybe you would have learned a lot quicker just having a conversation with someone, either they could teach you or, you know, sometimes it's good. You do need to step back on something. Oh, yeah. Right. And sometimes that's hard for me. You know, like yeah, I said, I yeah. go to a concert and I, I, I have a rule unless someone knows me and yeah. like, like and they obviously need some help and I, I could be like, Hey, you guys you guys doing good? You yeah. need anything? You know, I, I do that very rarely, but because most of the time I think it's that's that's how you learn, right? Like we're talking about the crash and burn thing. Yeah. Sometimes as an audio engineer, you gotta like have really bad concerts and then you're gonna hear it from the venue, you're gonna hear it from the the band members, and then hopefully next time that doesn't you know, you'll you'll work out the kinks that you yeah. the issues that you had. Mm -hmm. So um but 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 yeah, it's 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 a work in progress, and so for sure, I I I think I think this is a good sign because because these thoughts have been stewing in my head for the last couple of weeks anyway, um, 
So I, I definitely know a couple of people that I can that I can reach out to to, to help with that. So thank Sweet. you for that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, that, thanks for the question. I mean, honestly, part of the podcast for me is I like I have always these thoughts in my head and begin right. to talk to people about yeah. it. Is it's great. And then there's lots of people you know that hopefully will listen to this and be like, you know what, I've been feeling that way too. Yeah. You know, or you know, this this might be a good opportunity for me to change a couple of things or to right. try something new, mm-hmm. or just to learn about music like. That's what I, I hope is just, I love learning about new stuff. And so, yeah. you know, the best way to learn stuff is to talk to people. And I feel like that doesn't happen enough in our country right now. Definitely does not. You Especially would be politically. correct on that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of cool in the last, I don't know, probably the, what would you say? Podcasts kind of got, have gotten popular the last three, five, five three years. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I mean, they, they were a thing, but it, it was more like the older some older generation kind of trying to keep radio alive almost. Yeah. But then all the younger generation started kind of getting involved and they're like, you know what? This is kind of cool. Yeah. I can talk about anything. And some, some, some podcasts are definitely, they're not all created equal. They're all, you know, some, some are a little bit more, I don't know what the word is. They're less intellectual. Yeah. More just like for show, you know, like fun. And, And there's an audience for it, which is great. Yeah. But I, I think it's cool that there's a lot more intellectual conversations happening in podcasts. At least I've seen in the last probably three years, like it's been surprising how many were popping up. I'm like, man, that's so cool. Yeah. So there's, um, so, so Joe Rogan and his podcast, I don't listen to him very often. Um, and despite what personal beliefs you might have about Joe Rogan as, as a person, um, I have found that his podcasts, are, are 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 really good stepping stone into the kind into the kinds of conversations that we can have as a country not because that he's not talking there, there's nothing new that's yeah. being spoken about uh, on his podcast not usually yeah it's, not usually yeah. right however i i'm intrigued and i am just so so fascinated by the fact that he lets almost anyone come onto his podcast to talk about what they love. He'll have Neil deGrasse Tyson one day. He'll have the rock the next day. And then he'll have a neural, another like, like neuroscientist the next day. And then someone like Jordan Peterson and or someone yeah. like Jordan Peterson. And then someone like, like Kevin Hart. Yep. Like he has actors, he has celebrities, he has scientists, he has chemical engineers. So many different walks of life are being given an avenue to express like, Hey, this is what I love. Here is here comes some concerns that I have, and Joe's, for the most part, really good at listening to it. He's like, "Oh, I didn't know that ADHD could do this. Oh, I didn't know that that black holes, you know, can can get this big." Yeah. And I'm like, these like podcasts have really opened the window. Podcasts like his have really opened the opened the door for like, listen. We're here to talk to each other, and as humans, we're here to connect. And I feel like. I, I feel like podcasts like his are like a, a great, wonderful way to express like you can talk about anything. If you're passionate, someone's gonna listen. You know, so so like so like this music podcast. We're both passionate about music. Someone that likes music is gonna listen to this and be like, I get that. You know? Yeah, and it, I totally get it's, that. Yeah, and I, that's why I hope, you know, like yeah. and some people are gonna be like really understand about some of the conversations and some other people are gonna not have any idea what we're talking about. Yep. And that's okay. Like yeah. I, that's the kind of the point I want. You know, every episode be different. Some are going to connect with some people more than others. Some guests are going to connect with more people than others. Mm-hmm. And I hope it's a good opportunity for me, but also the guests to also, you know, talk about what they're doing. And yeah. like one of the things you said, you want you want to be an actor. Yeah. What if someone saw this, you know, this episode and they're like, "All right, let's get him in on a project." Mm, good point. That would be awesome. That would know? be awesome. Um, or, be, <laughs> or maybe later down the road, yeah. in a couple of years, you're looking back and you pull this up and you're like, I'm acting now. Mm. This is where I said I was going to do it. Here's proof that I said I was going to do it. Yeah. And now look at me, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's almost like self-affirmations to, to talk it into being, right? Like, yeah. I don't oh, yeah. know. That's not quite the way I wanted to word it. But, right. you know, talking something into existence, oh, yeah. right? That, dude. Like I could do a whole nother podcast on like spiritual journey and stuff and like manifestation and like traversing the unknown. That's we'll have to talk about that on another episode. We're definitely going to have, yeah, we'll have to have you back. Cause that for sure, that stuff that 
is super fascinating to me. Yeah. I mean, and I think you can definitely relate music into that somehow. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, very easily. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, we'll definitely uh, have to talk about that on another. another oh, dude, I'd, I'd love to come back and and and, and do that with you. Perfect. So. Well, tag. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, um, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. of course. Well, I'll, I'm going to hold you to the. You're going to release one on the Friday, on and then Friday. also um, the acting, the acting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I can. I can. I. I will. I will be there for that for sure. I will. I will make sure that I, that I follow through. Perfect. So all right. Well, I'll follow up. So thank you so much. <laughs> all right. I you're welcome. It. Yeah.